We're on the air, monkeys. It's monkey time. We're on the air. Hi, how you doing? My name's Todd. We're live. That's what that means. That's the symbol for live, Carol. It's just, we're live right now. Actually, the symbol for live should be like, we're live. Um, welcome. Our phone lines are open, 996-6775. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. Carol, you saw me being furious at the universe tonight. I was screaming at the city of Raleigh dissing West Hillsborough Street businesses. Oh, I'll, later. Later for that. Later. Breathe. We found out by reading the newspaper that Hillsborough Street in front of our, stre uh, our stretch of businesses is going to be closed starting December 19th. We're a retail store. We found out, reading the newspaper, that the week before Christmas, Hillsborough Street would be closed because a developer needs a sewage line run. And the city decided after a, I'm doing it now, Carol. After a series of, I was so furious at this. After a series of meetings that none of the Hillsborough Street businesses who will be affected by this were invited to or told about that, yeah, this is OK. The developer is paying the city $1,800 to make up for the lost revenue of its traffic cameras at the corner of Dixie Trail and Hillsboro, because there won't be any traffic there. What's happening to the Wolf Mart, Cup of Joe, I'm not speaking for any of these businesses, I'm just saying, Wolf Mart, Cup of Joe, Nice Price, Guru Guitar, Reader's Corner, where I work, but I don't speak for them. What's happening to compensate us? This is the week before Christmas. And the city of Raleigh, Nancy McFarlane, are you listening, has decided in its infinite wisdom to let us know we've been there since 19-freaking-75 on Hillsborough Street. One of the, the, all, these are the bright spots of Hillsborough Street. The tattoo shop, right? Right there. Beautiful tattoo shop that puts flowers out. Carol, they have a better garden than 9 out of 10 homes in downtown Raleigh. The tattoo shop on Hillsborough Street there, the one right next to where Pantana Bob's used to be. And don't even get me started about Josh Schaefer, that cute little boy who does these cutesy little columns for the NNO, calling Pantana Bob's a flea trap and the, the, the brewery a flea trap in his column last week. I get the point, a dive bar closed on Hillsborough Street, but what he ended up doing was dissing an entire section of town. It's disgusting. Anyway, Carol. The point was, we, longtime businesses that have been the positive side of that area of Hillsborough Street for decades, decades, Guru Guitar popping up, the tattoo shop there, building this gorgeous little garden out front, Reader's Corner since 1975, nice price books, Cup of Joe, they all found out. I was talking to the nice price guys earlier today on the phone, and they were like, uh, why are we reading about this in the newspaper? December 19th through January 5th, the week after Christmas, is our second biggest week of the year. And the city of Raleigh, look, we're not even, remember, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about how they don't even, you know, they just shut down Hillsborough Street for a bunch of people drinking beer in the middle of a Saturday afternoon, making a marathon run, or a run, not a marathon. You know, fine, it was cute. You know, I have no problem with runs. But they're, they're, they're really going crazy here. There's a blatant, systematic disrespect from Nancy McFarland, Russ Stevenson, and uh, Marianne Baldwin, all the city council, there's a blatant disrespect. How do you shut down retail businesses and let them read about it in the paper one month before Christmas, or, or a month and a half before Christmas, on December 19th? Who, who makes those damn decisions? Hi, you're on the air. Hey, uh, you're right on track with the, with the small businesses on that end of Hillsborough Street, but it's part of a bigger problem. Uh, how many million dollar big high rise condo projects have you seen under construction in, in, in Raleigh versus like affordable housing? Well, the affordable housing question is a really difficult one. I will say this. You're talking about that new one that's going up near Moore Square, right? I'm talking about the, the one near Moore Square. I'm talking about those two things that are right across the street from each other on Oberlin Road at Cameron Village. Yeah. There's all 
all this unaffordable housing going up in here, but yeah. there's no affordable housing, but it's well, part of the whole anti small business working well, middle I, class. I, I, uh, I, I mean, I understand working class, definitely. There's no p place for working class people in any of these high rises. We can agree on that, right? We can agree on that. And, and the lack of any affordable housing, I agree. I agree. There needs to be, along with these big high rises, there needs to be some plan. Did you see that NNO article about the stretch of um, Lenoir Street um, and that south, uh, south, the, is south of downtown area? Excuse me, it hit a couple days ago. And they were talking about yeah. all this great development that's going up there, right? You know, they're just, and these new, there's homes are going in, and there's going to be this great development, and we need to make it two-way. So, and I love two-way streets instead of one-way streets. So I'm with them on that. We need to make it two-way to get people coming and going. But in that whole article, the NNO reporter quoted the landlords that owned the buildings, quoted, uh, um, you know, city council people that were really excited about, the, or city officials that were really excited about the, the, the development. He quoted all these people. You know who he didn't quote? The poor folks who've been living in those houses for the last 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. The poor families, poor middle class. I, I, I don't know that they're all poor. I mean, you know, they're, 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 but they're good homes, they're small homes, all up and down that area. Those people are going to get displaced by any kind of development. Either mm -hmm. the property values go up and they can't afford the rent, right? And the NNO reporter didn't even think to get a quote from a single one of the longtime residents who'd been in those small little houses. Didn't even think to get a quote from any of those people. You know what I'm saying? Well, it would have taken too much work to go down there and knock on a door, Phil. Maybe it was too scary. Ooh. That but, be. you know, that, 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 he got, it was a business reporter. He got all the business people. He got all the landowners, he got all the landlords, but he couldn't even think as he's praising, and everybody, yay, development of that corridor. He couldn't even think to think about what's going to happen to the people. They're going to get kicked out. They're going to get displaced. They're going to go somewhere else where poor people go or middle, yeah. low, you know, lower middle class people go. Anyway, here's my point, though. You raise a really good point, and I'm sympathetic. That's why I brought up the NNO story. Okay, you with me? Mm -hmm. You raise a good point. However, however, I like the idea of high density developments going up inside the center of the city. That's the only way we're going to ever get mass transit to work in Raleigh. And, do you, and you're do you right. see my so point? There's a problem with that, but not everybody can afford to live in these expensive and condos that they're building in these buildings. But if you can get middle class people and upper middle class people and upper class people in those apartments and they get them using the train, you've got a solid voter base of support. Because you know what? The poor people that use the bus that could benefit from a, from a, a bus line or a train line downtown, most of, and the Republicans and Democrats both know this, most of them don't vote. So if you can get, a, I know this sounds cynical, but if you can get a solid base of middle class people downtown and upper class people in these condos and whatever, pushing for a great train system to other areas around Raleigh and around the Triangle, Cary, Nightdale, uh, you know, wh whatever, Garner, Durham, Chapel Hill, wherever. I think that, that that kind of density is important. So I hear a lot of people just automatically dissing these high rises. And I understand why, because there's no place for poor people in them. There's, it's not affordable to you or I. I'll never live in one of those places, right? The closest I come is when I'm screwing someone, Carol, whose who's, uh, relative is out of town for the weekend, and he has use of the, of the, and by screwing, I mean lovingly, affectionately caressing one another while we, while we watch like movies, right? I mean, that's what screwing means to me. We, we making out while you watch movies. You know what? So, so make, you know, I, I'm, I'm making out while I'm watching a movie, right? And making out, of course, includes lots of things beyond what you might think, but, but it doesn't necessarily include intercourse. Anyway, my point is the only way I've ever gotten into one of those high rises downtown is when somebody who I'm making out with has a relative who's out of town and needs them to dog sit. That's, that's the only way I ever get him. So I'm with you. That was a long winded way of saying I understand your position. Well, here's the thing. I'm, but I still oh, think the density is important. Okay, go ahead. Well, well and, 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 and I do too, but here's okay, the thing. Okay, as long as we agree on that. How long 
long as it takes for poor and working class people to be displaced, and then they what they got to go out and live in Nightdale, Wendell, Zebulon, wherever. They got no transportation to get around here for yes. 15, 20 right. years. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 sorry, but yeah. You and can't they're raising do the bus rates the now too. High rise, high price construction. You got to have housing for working something and affordable and poor people. Yeah. You got to you got to be doing it all at the same time. There's no political will for that though, because the people who would be most affected by that don't vote. This is the problem, people. Are well, you poor? Are you poor? You generally don't vote. Well, You're let me ask being you foolish. Something. That's that's the problem. You don't call your art your your politicians. You don't think of yourself as part of that system. You don't let them know you're mad. That's yeah. why you don't get what you want, poor people. Well, that's not the only reason why. I'm well, being I'm, I'm blaming is, the poor, think, Carol. What is, well, in addition to the this voter ID thing and disenfranchising various groups of yeah, people, they're actively okay. screwing you over, and you still don't vote or call. <laughs> That's the funny part. They're thinking they're staying up late. I'm sorry, caller. I got to say this. They're staying up. Art Pope and them. They're staying up late on Saturday night, gathered around a table the way you and I play D and D. They're staying up late at night, right? Not that I've played in years, but you know, not that there's anything wrong with that either. Um, I just saw a great D&D table, a guy who has this awesome two-level D&D. Oh my God, it was amazing. Um, but the point, what's my point, Carol? My point is they're staying up late at night to figure out ways to oot <clears throat> you, and you, lower middle class people and poor people like me, I'm with you, we don't vote. We don't call. We don't think of ourselves as part of that system, so we don't use it to get our way like they do. Meanwhile, they're staying up late Saturday nights, gathered around tables, right? Snorting crack or whatever it is these Republicans do, like Rob Ford, going, how can we screw over the poor people who don't vote anymore? Or more. How can we screw over the poor people who don't vote more? And you don't vote, you're part of the problem. I'm sorry. Well, go ahead, caller. What do you think about I, and I agree with you that that's what the Republicans and the big business interests are doing. But I also feel to some extent that some of the people on the other side of the political equation are not really that interested in organizing poor and working class people. Oh, yeah. Because they don't yeah. necessarily want to have to give up their, you know, what what the big donors, you know, we're always Classic. supposed to be like, you know, Classic. nonpartisan, you know, Classic. but the developers control the city council. And do you really think that, that, that the Democratic Party in Wake County wants to organize all these precincts that could, that where people could, if they got organized and if they had leadership and resources? Throw out the them? current Democrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, <laughs> no, no. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. If they organized well, and had current uh, and had resources. Okay, you know, um, there, there actually are progressive Democrats who do want to help organize those areas, but it's like they, were, they run into on one side, the establishment dens don't want to do that because they don't want to listen to the, you know, grassroots people. But on the other hand, I remember going down to, it was a post-Moral Monday rally on Fayetteville Street, and it's like the NAACP and a bunch of other groups want to be so nonpartisan that they don't tell people, look, if the Republicans are screwing you and the, and the establishment Democrats are screwing you less, then basically you've got to try to, I go for the path of least resistance, take over the Democratic Party, throw all the establishment Dems out, take, take, cause you're not going to do that. They're with, not with being the antagonistic, they're not being antagonistic enough to the, to the establishment Dems is what you're saying. Well, well, right, but the thing is, it's like, you know, hmm. yeah, you need, to, you need to get rid of the establishment dens, get in there okay. with all the other this is great. progressives, and yeah. take it over. Take it over the Democratic done. Party, yeah. Well, here's the, it can be done, but here's the thing. Look at what happened in Virginia. Carol, can we put up the Virginia thing, number seven? Or, no, number six. Um, the, Terry Ma uh, McAuliffe won the Virginia governor's race up yeah, just our, our state north of us, barely. It's funny because public policy polling, our local homeboys, they had him up by seven on Monday or Tuesday. Right. Right. They had well, him up by know, seven. He almost but here's, spent the other guy two to one. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I, if you go to my Twitter page, uh, Carol, can you put that up real fast? If you go, I'm not saying you have to follow me. I'm not, I'm, I don't care how many followers I have because I know half of you are marketing bots anyway. So it doesn't matter. But go to my Twitter page. I've got a link up to a political piece. You know Politico? 
Eh, yeah. I'm mixed feelings about Politico. Sometimes they're really good, sometimes they're really bad. They rely way too heavily on anonymous sources. And they're using anonymous sources in this piece that I link, but they have a really interesting, it's provocative. It provokes you, it makes you think, you know? It's a good piece at Politico about why the Virginia governor's race, when all the polls had it pretty heavily towards Mikhailov, all um, was so close. Um, and uh, here's the first thing, that, and this is what I'm reminded of when you called caller, is that McAuliffe is a dick. He's the classic centrist Democrat. He went after Howard Dean's campaign in 2004, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was instrumental in killing yeah. Howard Dean's campaign in 2004. He's, mm -hmm. he's what the, the, the liberals on, at places like Digby's blog love to call it a hippie puncher in the Democratic Party. They only call them hippie punchers in, if they're Democrats, right? So the Democrats who love to punch the hippies, they're those centrist Dems, and McAuliffe is so corrupt. I mean, Cuccinelli, the Republican, is completely, it's not even a question of who I would have voted for. I would have gone to the polls, hold my nose, flipped off the voting booth, the, vo the ballot, right? Oh, no, really, that's, my, that's what I do, Carol. That's my signature move. Everybody needs a signature wrestling move in the voting booth, right? My signature wrestling move is I do all the, I vote, I vote, I vote, and then I just go, bam, and I flip them off, right? <laughs> that's, you need a signature move to make yourself feel good about voting. So anyway, that's my signature move. I just run it up and down the, uh, the, the ballot. So the point is, McAuliffe is that kind of a Democrat that you're talking about. He's that centrist, corporatist Dem who doesn't want to, who doesn't care about poor people. But, mm -hmm. but even those Democrats, I would say are better than anything the Republican Party comes up with. Exactly, exactly right. But Except if we could throw out those Democrats and get progressives in their place, that would be even better, and that's what we need to be working for. And you wish that the Moral Monday people were more clear on that. Is that I, well? I wish that the Moral Monday people and you know the scenic people and the SEIU and everybody else realize: look, you got two parties in North Carolina for the time being. Let's hope one day in the future that that changes and it's easier to get in there as a third party, right? Right. And we can agree on that. While we're here in North Carolina right now, as we speak, in the future, present day, right? Which party, if you're, if you're an African American, if you're a Hispanic, if you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, whatever, right? Which party do you, should you be a member of and get involved and get behind there to create like you know, like a union, yeah. collective bargaining, yeah, organized yeah, yeah. labor? Yeah, we're, and we're getting over there. The Democratic Party, I'm sorry, there's no other choice. Yeah, uh, okay, all right, thanks for calling. I've got Bye. other things to talk about, man, but I appreciate your call. That was a great call. Thanks, right, well. thanks, thanks for watching, and uh, you know, you know, keep calling. All right. Um, I didn't mean to cut you. You didn't have to hang up immediately, but I, I just want. I mean, you know, I, I would agree with that. You know, black, Hispanic, gay, lesbian, whatever. Which is why the and women too. Cuccinelli in Virginia was an awful anti-woman candidate, and the the gap between um, uh, between the candidates among women was huge compared to the gap between the candidates among men. It was so close. Here's the two reasons it was so close. Carol's like, so why was it so close? Thank you, Carol, for keeping me on track. Oh, don't forget to put up the thing about the colony tonight. Let's do that first. Um, the col if you're, there's a new documentary out about the Stone Roses, and it's being released in a really weird way. They're releasing it in art films, art house theaters. All, I'm sorry, not art films, in art house theaters like the colony all over the country. And this, like this month, you know, it's being released. It's called The Stone Roses Made of Stone. And they're showing it tonight at the Colony, along with just a couple of other places around the country. So tonight at 9.30, if you're a Stone Roses fan, you should be at, uh, at the Colony. Um, I've heard good things about the documentary. So there you go. Um, first reason, Obamacare. The rollout was so atrocious. Now, we've talked, Carol, about why the Obamacare rollout has been so atrocious. They didn't, they, they didn't hire tech people. They didn't have tech people. Remember, the, the process by which you get these government contracts, contracts is Byzantine. It's complex. It's difficult. And so companies come up that specialize not in tech solutions, but in getting government contracts. 
And so this is, this is what I've heard, this is what I've gathered by multiple readings and listening on the radio, right? Is that these co the company that won this is one of these companies that has specialized in getting these government contracts, but they didn't have any particular tech expertise. And this was the biggest startup ever in the United States. This was a huge undertaking. And Obama, at the beginning, according to a Washington Post article from a few days ago, which I didn't link actually, but I, should, uh, I will link in the next day or so um, at, at my Twitter page. Um, if you, it, the Obama administration, specifically Obama himself, chose people at the top who didn't have tech experience and were gonna start the biggest tech startup of the last 10 years, right? That was the, that's the goal, that was the problem, that was the challenge. And they didn't have people who were up to that challenge to do this. Some Republican handed the woman in charge of, the, of Obamacare the Websites for Dummies book, and that made all the rounds, Carol. Websites for Dummies, oh, you, 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 you. that's about the level of the discussion that the Republicans offer, many of them. I know there are smart Republicans out there. I don't mean to diss you all, but this is, this is the top level of leadership that you have now. Boner, Boehner, I'm sorry, Boehner, Boehner. Sorry, I don't want to be crass, Boehner. No, I, I mean, I can't help but be crass, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be any more crass than I already am, naturally. Um, but Boehner, you know, is just a, yeah, he's just a jerk. It's like he's like Rob Ford, you know, he's just a jerk. So the first thing is Obamacare closed the gap. It's so, the, the negative news about Obamacare, and remember, they're doing, the insurance companies are doing gangbusters, trying, trying to make sure that people don't know about all these other options. The reason people are getting letters from their insurance companies saying, oh, you can't get this coverage, is that the insurance companies are failing to mention, well, you have other options. Most of the people who are getting the letters, most, I'll, I'll, I don't know if it's most, many of the people, many, I'm being honest, many of the people who are getting the letters from their insurance companies, oh, we can't continue this coverage, have crappy coverage that would be better if they joined one of the exchanges. The federal exchange or if their state, if it was smart, the state exchange that got set up. Kentucky's exchange is going really smoothly. They've got advocates out there helping people figure out that they have options now. Remember, we, get, we, had, a, we had an obnoxiously ass ish editorial from John Peter Zane in the NNO today, where he says Obama's plan was to dis redistribute wealth from the rich to the poor. And it cracks me up because John Peter Zane thinks of himself obviously as part of the upper middle class. And you, it's like, you read that essay, you're like, dude, you're reaching. You're totally reaching. You know, you think you're part of the upper middle class, but you're just as tenuous as anybody else. Um, but, but, he says Obama's point was to redistribute wealth from the rich to the poor. No, the, po the, the main problem with Obamacare is that it kept the insurance companies in the equation. And so now, what the main point to Obamacare was there are all these people who can't get insurance because they have pre-existing conditions. That's gone now. Peter Zane didn't even mention the phrase pre-existing condition. He was their book reviewer at the NNO, and now he's like, Pain, you know, turning himself into this conservative columnist. It's disgusting. What a, it was just a completely intellectually dishonest column. Completely intellectually dishonest. The, you know, the classic Tea Party garbage. Anyway, my point is, Obamacare, the rollout has been so negative that it really hurt Michaela's chances and galvanized the right, and they started coming out. Right? The second thing... But here's, this is even the more interesting, and this is going to have ramifications in North Carolina because, you know, Kay Hagan's up for re-election in 2014, right? And we're going to see a lot more of what does Kay Hagan think of Obamacare? And Kay Hagan's got two choices now. She can be like, oh, it was a terrible rollout. Oh, this was terrible. We need to just kill it. This is just awful. Or she can be like, well, the rollout was bad, but the fundamental idea of making sure that people who have pre-existing illness, cannot be denied health insurance, is sound, and we need to stand firm on that. We'll see what Kay Hagan does. She's, she was good on gay marriage in the Senate this week. 
But we'll see what Kay Hagan does about Obamacare. And every Democratic candidate in 2014 is looking at Obamacare going, this was your signature achievement, Obama? You couldn't even get the right people to build the damn website? And they're right to say that. But the insurance companies, and I link it to another article in my Twitter page where we, that, it talk, that talks about the insurance companies at Talking Points Memo, sending out misleading letters to people saying, we're gonna, you're gonna have to change, you have to, here's your option, your health insurance option, $500 a month more than what you've been paying, without telling them that the government exchanges are out there offering better insurance at cheaper prices. So if you get a letter from your insurance company, don't believe it. Call. Call, we don't have a state exchange in North Carolina, but call the federal number. Call, you know, go, go to the website. They're getting better and better and better, right? Three minutes? Okay. Um, oh, the second thing, though, the second thing about Cuccinelli losing is that the business Republicans weren't there giving him money. McAuliffe outspent him. All the Republicans, oh, McAuliffe outspent his two to one. But the Chamber of Commerce, which donated a million dollars to the 2009 Virginia Republican governor's candidate, gave zero. The National Chamber of Commerce gave zero to Cuccinelli, zero, because he's one of those tea parties, tea party guys. Yeah, yeah, we got to talk about that. But um, one other thing, the Republican National Committee spent $9 million in 2009 on the Republican candidate for governor of Virginia. They spent $3 million on Cuccinelli. Why? Because of garbage like the government shutdown. Business people don't like stuff like the government shutdown, spiteful stuff. So the second reason that Cuccinelli um, you know, could close the gap but didn't win was that the business Republicans were against him. That's an important lesson. All right, um, so Rob Ford, can we say that? Yeah, don't forget, there's a murder here. There's a guy who was murdered who is alleged to have had the Rob Ford crack video on his cell phone at the time, at the moment he was murdered. There's a murder involved here. Let's just keep that in mind. Okay, what was the other one? Oh, way, way back. Um, thanks to North American Video, I got to see the way, way back. They're a sponsor of the show, but um, they, so what that means is they let us watch videos for free, you know, take out videos for free, and we talk about the movies here. The way, way back is very cute. It's almost unbearably cute at sometimes, Carol, but it's a great coming of age story. Sam Rockwell is amazing as this stoner uh, manager of a water park and Steve Carell is in it. It's just a really good movie, The Way, Way Back. Um, it's funny, it's got the cute little indie rock songs, you know, as the kid rides along on the pink bicycle. You know, an indie, it's like Juno or, you know, Little Miss Sunshine. If you haven't seen The Way, Way Back, and you're in the mood for just a little, few moments of like, oh, this is really impossibly cute, but then you go, I also really like it. You're gonna really like The Way, Way Back. So thanks to North American Video for letting us uh, rent the movies so that we can tell you the good ones. Um, how much time I got, Carol? Yeah, 30 seconds. North American, North American videos in Cameron Village, and there's one in, in, uh, near Cary in West Raleigh over by um, off uh, where 55 and 54 branch off, you know, there. Um, uh, so just Google North American video. They're behind Harris Teeter in Cameron Village near the laundromat there. Um, their uh, memberships are free. It's a really great little spot. I always, their wall of new releases is wonderful. It's much better than uh, browsing Netflix. All right, take care of each other. We'll see you next week.